Welcome to Taiwan Biotech and Vaccine Industry Seminar. I'm today's host, Christine. Taiwan has strong capabilities in biomedical industry. Right now, we are still under a huge impact of the pandemic, and the world is keen in developing COVID-19 vaccine, including Taiwan. Today, we are very much honored to invite Taiwan Bio Industry Organization and Adamant Corporation to share with us Taiwan's development in biotech and the vaccine industry. In the beginning of today's seminar, let us first welcome Mr. James Huang, Chairman of TITRA, to give us the opening remarks. Welcome, Chairman Huang. Uh, Excellencies, members of the uh, diplomatic and commercial community, Dr. Zhan Qixian, Chairman and CEO of Admin Corporation, and Chairman Wu Zhongxun, Chairman of Taiwan Bio Industry Organization, and distinguished guests and ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. And welcome to our series of tool of Taiwan innovation and technology. And uh, today, uh, our tour uh, will start from uh, Taipei uh, TICC building because uh, after a series of visits in Southern Taiwan and in uh, Taoyuan and Taipei City, uh, today we are going to hold a very important uh, seminar on the issues of uh, vaccine and biotech. And I'm sure you all, you all know that since the outbreak of COVID-19 uh, earlier this year, and the world, the world right now is still haunted and plagued by the pandemic. And it is extremely important for nations to work together to develop the vaccines that are badly needed to combat the pandemic. And along the night, uh, the progress of biotech industries will, I'm sure, will also determine the fate of humankind in the 21st century, together with artificial intelligence. So uh, we hold today's seminar with uh, the purpose to introduce to you the progress of uh, Taiwan's biotech companies and in particular uh, on their capability in developing vaccine. Uh, we have invited uh, Dr. Zhan Qixian, the, the chairman of uh, Admin, uh, Ad Admin uh, Corporation, and Dr. Zhang was our former Minister of Health, a very, very, uh, a very well-respected uh, leaders in leader in our medical community and industries. And also, we have invited uh, Chairman uh, Wu Zhongxin, the Chairman of uh, Taiwan Bio Industry Organization, to report to you, ladies and gentlemen, on the progress that Taiwan's biotech industries is making. And I hope we can start from here and uh, to facilitate and foster more, if possible, cooperation between Taiwan and the nations you represent in our common purpose of combating the pandemic. So uh, without further ado, I We'll stop here, and I hope you all have uh, a very fruitful uh, meeting and uh, result today. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Huang. Okay, so now we are moving on to today's sessions. Our first speaker today is Dr. Zhong Xunwu, Chairman of Taiwan Bioindustry Organization. It is our honor to invite him to share the topic on Taiwan biotechnology and pharmaceutical industry. Welcome. Uh, distinguished guests, 
uh, Chairman Huang, Chairman Jen, and so I think uh, for the coming uh, 15 minutes, I'll spend some time to uh, uh, discuss with you or show you some of the, the progress uh, in, in Taiwan bio, biotech industry, including the diagnosis as well as the, the battles against the, 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 the pandemic. Okay, so next please. Okay, so the, this one shows the snapshot of the Taiwan bio, biomedical industry the, since the, since the, the three years three years ago. So, so actually, currently we have uh, the about received more than 200, uh, 200 uh, clearance on, on US US uh, FDA on five five ten K, which is uh, for the for a medical device. And 12 new drug indication received the market approved internationally. And so these are the new, the brand new drug. All these, uh, these medical devices as well as the, the drugs are actually developed in, in Taiwan. So in terms of a combat, combating or fighting the COVID-19, Taiwan, as we know, is helping. We, we have currently have the three vaccine uh, developing and the two new drugs in the progress of clinical trials. Altogether, we have approved approved the twenty eight uh, uh, diagnostic and uh, supportive products um, approved by via EUA uh, by TFDA or US, US FDA. So it's not only the Taiwan approval, also the US approval. Next, next slide, please. So these are the three the vaccines currently developed in in Taiwan by the local the local biotech com companies. And I think uh, Dr. Chen, Dr. Chen is gonna uh, elaborate uh, on, on the progress later. So I just uh, show you the, the name of these three, three company. And actually these, all these three programs are heavily supported by the government funding. Next one, please. And this slide shows the manufacture of diagnostic products and also to give, give a flavor of the, 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 the uh, the industry or the companies that are uh, involved in in the testing of the COVID nineteen, as you know, that, that uh, to detect the COVID nineteen, you can detect the presence of the virus as 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 you used by PCR, and which detect the the nuclear acid, the, the presence of the nuclear acid uh, in the sample, and also you can also uh, detect the antibody. Antibody in the, uh, could you help me please? The presence, the presence, okay, I, I got it. The presence of the antibody, so it's um, also actually there are five, five companies that develop products to, to detect antibody, the presence of antibody in, uh, in the rapid test uh, format. And also the third, the third uh, target is the, the antigen. And antigens currently, there are two companies. Companies actually develop the antigen detecting and rapid test. And both of these are rapid tests. So, in another way, it can be used on the, at, at the at the port or at the point. You can immediately get the result very soon. So, bio, so let's talk about and uh, let's look at the, the biomedical industry in, in Taiwan. Actually, is growing. Currently, we we have in terms of revenues, when Taiwan has uh, the, the whole industry uh, captures uh, 19 billion US dollars per year with the, the growth rate of 8.7%. Uh, in terms of the investment, we have uh, 1.8 billion, billion dollars. And for, for the market cap of the total industry in Taiwan, we currently have 183 public listed biotech companies with the market cap over $45.8 billion. And so th this shows the, the growth and uh, the, the numbers of uh, uh, the, the investment, uh, revenue investment as well as the market cap. And the uh, industry uh, is uh, composed of the healthcare, medical device, pharmaceutical, as and also apply the biotech. And, and this uh, includes also all different kind of uh, 
uh, industry using a bi um, biological approach, for example, agricultural or environmental. And for for the for the biomedical innovation from academia to IPO, currently, in terms of very upstream, the academia part, we have a research fund, and we have a, a, a program, or used to have a pro program that promoting academia uh, academia output into the industrial development. Okay, and uh, for in terms of the startup. And the government has the SPIR to support the, the small business uh, biotech and also the A plus uh, the programs which support the large, large, larger uh, development projects. And also uh, many core facility and animal facility has been set up to facilitate the, the, the animal studies uh, for the development of new drugs. And also rapid prototyping the center and established to help have the small companies to prototype their, pro, their early stage products. In terms of lending, you don't need to have a, have an income to get an IPO. So government actually uh, has a, has a except has a set up a rules that the, the company the biotech company do not need to have the income to to get IPO so that the, they will provide enough and sufficient uh, financial support for the development of biomedical product, including medical devices, where the, as well as the, the biopharmaceuticals. And also many special zones have been set up, for example, Nei, uh, Nei Nang, Nangang's uh, Biomedical Park and, and et cetera and also have a, a free trade uh, zone to set up. And government uh, actually provide a special, in, special in, in, incentive for the biomedical in industry, including 35 of the R&D uh, spending offset, 20% of the original cost of the investor offset. So we can get the company tax offset and uh, the personal investor offset also has 35% uh, of the employee the training offset. So actually, government is subsidizing the, 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 the company for developing the biomedical products. And also, Taiwan, to connect the from north to south is only the two hours of highway speed, highway, uh, High speed uh, rail, railway. So actually, this is a very compact and close uh, uh, cluster of the biomedical industry. Biomedical industry. We have uh, around the 20, uh, seven, one, 178 uh, new drug companies and uh, medical device and uh, et cetera on uh, um, the, the, the Taipei metropolitan area. Uh, also, the night, overnight, all oh, around un, hundreds of biological and ICT device uh, companies in the uh, in Shinchu area and etc. And we have uh, uh, heavily, heavily uh, invested uh, uh, pharmaceutical medical the testing implant the plants and also have a food. Uh, functional food and herbal med medicine the clusters in the very south of the tropical area in Taiwan. So altogether, we have 19 medical centers and uh, 150, 50, 150 university research institute in, in the reach of the two hours. And on top of the re research and, and development activity, Taiwan has a very uh, excellent research, res uh, clinical research infrastructures. As most of you know, so that uh, we have a very, one of the best uh, medical medical insurance uh, in in the world. Actually, Taiwan has there are fourteen Taiwan hospitals are in the world's the top 20, uh, 200 hospital list. And actually is number, number one, it is the number one in Asia and uh, uh, the third in globally. So we have the Taiwan Clinical Trial Consortium, which is uh, one stop shop for the, for the clinical trial. And we have a, a co-IRB mechanism. So you, uh, so, so that you get one, one IRB approval the, and it, and from one institute, and you get the approval from the most of the other institutes at the same time. And also, 
the manufacturer capability, we got many accredited uh, PIX GMP faci facilities. So this shows the, the clinical trial consortium, Taiwan clinical trial consortium that I, I just mentioned. There are, there, there are 20, 12, 12 uh, consortiums and plus one additional the cell therapy consortium since, year, uh, since last year. So if, uh, if any company needs a, a clinical trial, you can contact, uh, for example, stroke, you can contact them and then you get the all the medical centers that you that you are interested in, to participate in your your clinical trial. So pipeline of new drug development in Taiwan. There, are, uh, three hundred and sixteen new drugs are in the stage of clinical trial in Taiwan and abroad. Okay, and this shows the number, and this shows the herbal medicine and and the small molecule biologic cell therapies, different categories, and uh, the distribution of. Uh, these these drugs in different different phases. So, in the, in the field of the biotech, if you are interested in database, you are interested in the software, service, antibody platform, new therapeutics, or CLC, CDMO service, you can reach these companies as I showed uh, for for your future business uh, contact. Or actually, you are if you are interested in these activities. You can contact RD Research Institute as shows in here, and for resource for resources, as you can see, Taiwan has a, a gather a biobank, and so not only the material, also the database, and that and LTD for diagnostic diagnosis purpose, and also for national health insurance the database. This accumulate the, a very long and comprehensive. The, the data are from the national health insurance uh, um, medical records in the past, and also clinical trial, clinical trial consortium, as just I mentioned, and as I mentioned, the strong government support. So these are the examples of the boom biotech startup in Tai in Taiwan, which develop all different kind of uh, medical device, and uh, these are shown here for your reference. And Taiwan major in bound innovation. Actually, we got the top uh, number one, number one macroeconomic stability. And this uh, from the WF uh, of uh, uh, 2018, quality of life, number one, biopharmaceutical competitive investment index. And uh, uh, from the PCI of this year, number two, and rank number four was best investment destination, best uh, IP environment environment in Asia Pacific. I think we have the stress on, on this point. Uh, Taiwan do respect and we we respect the IP and so we, we have a very very strict IP protection here. So they don't have to worry about uh, any IP issues. IP issues well protected in Taiwan. Innovation protected innovation capability rank number four and etc. Okay. So Cross-discipline open innovation. So uh, currently, it's not only medicine, uh, medicine or biology. Actually, there's a, a, a mix mix of uh, medicine and uh, and and uh, ICT. So actually, Google, Microsoft, and IBM uh, just uh, either uh, set up set up the research activity he, uh, here in Taiwan or actually uh, establish uh, close collaboration with the company in Taiwan. So this uh, shows some of the international international pharmaceutical companies that, that uh, have uh, either established uh, co international collaboration with Taiwan or has established some of the uh, research, uh, research centers in Taiwan. And one of the important uh, events in Taiwan in, in summer in, in the summer is the BioAsia Taiwan Conference and Exhibition. This is actually a sister the conference with the US Bio. And uh, so in this years, uh, al although we do have a pandemic uh, uh, global, globally going on, but, uh, but still the BioAsia Taiwan will still have this uh, pro uh, conference run, run in Taiwan and uh, with the, with the topic is uh, finding the cures in the, in the crisis. And this shows, 
shows the, some of the conference. So we do have uh, uh, online the conference, but all at the center on site the uh, conference, we, we have uh, many, many conferences going on to, at, at that time. So we have the uh, participants from uh, 32 countries. We have uh, five, more than 5,000 professionals attending and uh, 1,000, more than 1,100 uh, booths and multifunctional local company about uh, 500. So we have one-on-one uh, in, uh, -on -one interac interaction or uh, business consultation with, um, with the number of the 6,000. So with the successful, successful uh, conference in this year, we welcome you to join the BioAsia Taiwan the, in the next year, which is going to be run on the July 21st and 20, 21st to 25th. So we would love to partner with you and we, we can add value together. And in this world, uh, uh, Taiwan can help and Taiwan is helping. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. And for the online viewers, if you have any questions um, toward Dr. Wu's speech, uh, please feel free to leave your questions online and we will collect them all together and raise um, to Dr. Wu at, during our Q&A session. So our next speaker, let us welcome um, Dr. Qi Xianzhan, Chairman and CEO of Adamun Corporation. And he will share with us the development and highlights of Taiwan vaccine. Now, welcome. Your Excellency, Chairman Huang, Chairman Wu, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Uh, it's a privilege here to share my idea with development of a vaccine in Taiwan. Uh, let's come to the first uh, slide. Now, why Taiwan? Uh, Dr. Wu has said something about it, but why Taiwan? What we can do? What, uh, what, what make us unique? The medical education and academic institution is fully provided and sophisticated in Taiwan, as Dr. Wu has just mentioned earlier. And uh, we have a very comprehensive uh, national health insurance and with medical network. As you know, the 100% full coverage of national health insurance in Taiwan is first in whole Asia. And uh, we have a significant uh, database and the big data for all the analytic data you need. And also that gives us a very uh, solid ground for further clinical trial or clinical studies. And uh, number three, the regulation. <clears throat> the we have established our uh, drug uh, evaluation center uh, on 1998. That's the first in Asia. And at that time, we established this drug evaluation uh, center is the purpose to integrate the drug or device regulatory standard with international commercials. At that time, when we established this uh, institution, I went to the uh, Washington DC and signed the uh, cooperation ag agreement with the US FDA. And they have sent the dispatch as expert uh, to come up could come to Taiwan, help us set up all the protocol for the new drug or device evaluation and the regulatory requirement and are coherent to the U.S. standard. And those teams stayed here for one year and then train our people. We established this uh, protocol. Now we follow that. Num number four, why Taiwan? We observed we observed intellectual property uh, property right very closely, which 
is already known by the international community. They trust us. They know they can work with us. They know we won't leak. They know the secret, commercial secret or industrial secret stays. Secondly, the our workers, I won't say, I will call them workers, I say the tech, our uh, technology talent or technology workers on the pharmaceutical or vaccine or biotech industry, our people educational level is high. And so our learning curve is short and they can adjust any kind of international or industrial change very quickly. Just for example, my company, all of them, we 85% is including the, 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 the staff members on the warehouse or uh, or the, the 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 basic workers and the uh, uh, cleaners, all them together, eighty five percent is college graduate and with related specialty. That tells you how high the working talent in Taiwan in the special area. I don't see that in other country in Taiwan. But I don't see that other country in Asia or other part of the world. And the working ethic, I, I think all of you know that. The people here work hard and with sincere, and they work according to what they were told. They never, they don't deviate. They deliver what they were asked. That's working ethic. They promise you they finish, they finish. They promise this quality, they give you that quality. That's what we call working ethic. Quality assurance. And good number of them has overseas experience. It's hard to find outside of Taiwan. Nine, the last language. We, most of our people in this industry speak good English. They read, they study in the abroad, and they can communicate with whole world easily. Some country has a cheaper labor, but they don't have a good working ethic. Some country have a good working ethic, they work hard, but they have a language problem. Taiwan have all of them. That's unique. Okay, after saying that, let's come to this company I want to introduce to you about the vaccine. Next. The Ademin. This company where I'm working, this country, this company, the important thing of this vaccine company is, no, next one. How can I do this? Backward. Okay. Help me. This is Chinese. We are the Hong Dian. Oh, okay. Yoma? Say Okay. Yeah. We, so far, as you can see, we partner with many companies and uh, in including Europeans, Japan, and U United States. Next one, how, how I, okay, you help, someone help me. No, Andrew, where are you? Why don't you come here, help me? This com the company 
I come to this company in 2008. And as you can see, from there, gradually getting the certificate of EMA, that's the European Medical Agency, that's in the EU. Once they approve you, EU accept you. And gradually in here, we get a United States FDA approval. And all of you, you can tell, we gradually go abroad and then all the way we produce vaccine from flu vaccine to tri uh, triple variant and quadruple variant, and now we come to here with COVID and others. Well, we'll go into the detail next. Take this one. Quit. Uh, what important of this one? Very important, especially in vaccine, you have to have GCP and GMP approval in order you can own the market to sell your product. As you can see, Adamin has received not just Taiwan, but uh, Okay. As you can see, the GMP certificate of this one, US FDA, Brazil, <coughs> just Europe, Taiwan, and the rest of others, including Korea. And Adamin is the only one vaccine company has received FDA and EMA GMP approval in Asia. We are the only one has that both. That means we are the only one can sell our vaccine to Europe and USA. Without it, you can't. Next one. That's what we did for our for Taiwan on the past. This is the real product for Taiwan people so far. Next. And this is all the vaccine we utilize in Taiwan in 2018. 36% of the vaccine was produced by Adamin. Next. Our product here, this Japanese encephalitis vaccine, that's quadruple flu vaccine, that's quadruple vaccine, uh, quadruple flu vaccine, that's TTA, that's tetanus, that's tetanus, and also we do the protein drug formulation, filling, and packaging service. And this is approved by both EU and United States. Next. Our product from Taiwan goes to the United States. That's quadriprovalent flu vaccine with the aseptic filling service. This, we're working with China to do the filling and packaging, send it to the Europe. Southeast Asia, Thailand, and Europe. Next. The core technology here is the so-called embryo egg technology. That's for flu vaccine. Cell culture for EV71, the so-called foot mouse disease, influenza, ZEV, 
protein, just recombinant protein. Now is the COVID-19 vaccine. That's where the technology, that's what the, util the technology we're utilizing now. And uh, sterilize, this is formulation, filling, packaging. We do this for Sanofi Pasteur and ship it to United States for their use purpose. And this goes to Europe. And as I say, this system by EU and by US and this are recertified every two years for the last eight years. And not every biotech company or as a manufacturer can be recertified easily. Almost one third of certified biotech manufacturer company cannot be recertified on the world right. Next one. All the vaccine development has a several stages. It's quite not exactly the same of the regular new drug. It's much more uh, stringing. And uh, for the animal test and all the way, and also we have the so-called post-market surveillance every year. We have to put contact. And that has been done. And all the new vaccine we developed, we, we went through this all the way. Next. What we are doing now, right now, this is what we are doing. One, two, three, and plus NDA, as, as you can see, as, at seven and nine, that was the uh, birth flu at a time. And the EV71, JEV, all of this, some are in the preclinical stage, some are in the phase one stage. Next one. Uh, also the pneumococcus, coccus, uh, vaccine, TTP, meningococcus, that's all the things under the develop. Next. Now, everybody said, talk about it, worry about the COVID-19. So what kind of uh, COVID-19 vaccine now the whole world is developing? How are they? What the difference are they? Let me give you a summary. There's actually a four category of the COVID-19 vaccine on the world so far. The up one here is using the recombinant protein, which I have told you uh, we are using it. And the other one is a messenger RNA. Now people knows about it. It's a Moderna or Pfizer is using this one. And this one is in Sanofi from France on the US Novavax and the other in Taiwan. And the other one category is using adenovirus as a vector. That's Oxford, AstraZeneca and the J Jensen. They are in this category. And the other one is the whole inactive bios, just whole bios in category, that's in China. Uh, what, we are very happy and uh, we wanna congratulate the messenger RNA in Pfizer and Moderna now is getting approval. They are getting approval from the United States with the EUA. We we'll, we'll congratulate them, we'll, that's good for the whole world. And uh, that, the, the recombinant protein, it will take a bit longer. Recombinant protein, because the pre preparation takes longer. As you can see, we are in the phase one and we finished. We are now in the process going to phase two. And even Sanofi Pass two in the France, they are also in the phase one and they are finishing and they are moving to the phase two next month. And here they move faster. And uh, this one is faster too, the, the adenovirus. 
and uh, this one is also faster. However, uh, this is the cro the advantage and disadvantage of the each vaccine. They have a different type. They have a different characters. And they have their advantage and disadvantages. But the most important, I want to point it out here, regardless messenger RNA or regardless adenovirus, those has not been used in the human before. Only recombinant protein has been used on the human. This is quick. They're most likely they're good. They will be they will be uh, distributed distributed very soon, but do have this kind of issue. And uh, this one is quick, but because of the, they are using the whole virus, most of the developed country try not to use it. Next one. And we started this project early this year on the January when, it, when the case broke out. We started doing this work. And uh, we believe because this is a different type of virus, different type of infection, so we use, believe using subunit approach is better than the traditional whole virus. And the subunit virus is not the virus itself, but it's the synthetic protein as a, according to the DNA sequence of the virus. So you're receiving the protein, which are the same DNA sequence with the coronavirus, but not the virus itself. Next one. So we, why, we choose that one based on that idea and also because we believe they will come up with a good result with safety because it's been used for years. This technology are using in the hepatitis B, using in the full blocks, and also using cervical cancer vaccine, HPV also. So it's been using more than 10 years and we feel comfortable with that. And uh, it's all, more than uh, 10 million people has all been using for, with this kind of a technology. Also, because we have been working with Sanofi Pass 2, with producing the full blocks which are using the protein uh, using the recombinant protein technology, and we're familiar with it, so we feel comfortable. That's why we're choosing this technology platform. Next. Uh, the animal study we finished uh, on the middle of the, this year, and then we conduct the animal study using the protein we uh, the recombinant protein, we produce it. And uh, using the P3 lab on the Taiwan University, and uh, we found out it's pretty promising. Next one. The people ask, can you do the COVID-19 vaccine and the full vaccine at the same time without influence. Yes, we can, because of two different technology and also two platform, different production lines. And uh, we're comfortable with this number. Next one. Oh, by the way, uh, go back. And the most importantly, we own the entire intellectual property right. So we are not worried about being constrained to go anywhere in the world. Next. That's the uh, animal study as well. You can see this one. That means from here is the protein we titrated over to 2,000 uh, 2, liters 
you still see no virus. It's here a little bit, then the virus comes out. So we know it's pretty potent at this point. Next. Uh, that's the dilution and we found out how much uh, the protection uh, potential we can have in the neutralization from the animal study. Next. In the traditionally, vaccine develop takes a long time, almost 10 years, you can see. But this time, because of COVID-19, everybody believes we have to do it quick. So there's acceleration. Some of them are overlapping, but overlapping doesn't mean you escape it. You still do it, but overlap. What do you do here? More usually this goes here, 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 but you move it to here, you move it to here, you do it at the same time, save your time, but take more risk. Because if you do this, if you succeed, you follow. If you're not, then you don't do it. You save your money. But in this way, without knowing this is going to be succeed or not, you do it right away. And what if you fail, you'll fail all of them. So you lost more money for that. But if you succeed, you move quicker. That's what's happening now. And that's why some, especially United States government, subsidize helping a lot of companies say, go ahead, do it. We're on your back. We'll help you. And uh, the planning, we, we told you before, someone questioned, can you do this and flu at the same time? Do you have enough capacity? We say yes, because it's a two different production lines. Secondly, we, ourselves, and with our strategic partner together, 50 million doses a year. That's enough. And also, as I had told you, we have a patent right. We produce this by our own from the beginning, from the first protein. So we can go anywhere else. We can work with any other country or any company we want. Next. And this is the, the plant. Next. And uh, we want to make sure we have vaccine for whatever reason. We are not sure our first vaccine will be successful. No one knows that. So we have something on the reserve. In, ca in case we need it, those are the ones on the pipeline. Next. In addition, uh, we have a sideline side uh, development. That's the antigen rapid test. And that's now we try to get the license ex uh, approval in December. That's in 20 minutes, you know the answer. It's antigen test. I think if this is approved, or other, I know other company also is working on this, but once this is approved, I think it will be tremendous advantage for the border control. Before you enter the airplane, from outside, you can test them. You can test them on the, 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 the airport waiting area, the airline waiting area. Two hours ahead, test them. If they're clear, let them get on board. If not, no. That will reduce all the risk now you're seeing in Taiwan recently, any other part of the country. I believe once that this is going to be white utilized in everywhere. Next. And that's, we have a seven year contract cooperation with Sanofi. We produce the flu vaccine for Sanofi for United States. This year we successfully complete 8 million doses for them. It's already shipping. Done. And this, uh, the one, we signed the contract at the early this year for seven years. Next. 
as you can see, next. As you can see, they come and they want to know what, how we are doing. And uh, we give them all the information they'd like to know. And uh, we also open the arm to do whatever we, United States and Taiwan can work together. And next, that also means we can work not just for us, but also for other countries, your countries, your excellency, you, the nation you represented, if you are interested, you, if you want to be the distributor for your people, for our product, we're here. We're happy to do so. Next. And though if one do that, that's probably we like to have this kind of uh, infrastructure ready so we can give it to you. Next. That's for the distribution. But if you say, how about we come as a partner, we do the pr production. We can be do that. If you have something or you have vaccine, you have something, you need us to do the production for you, you're more than welcome. Or you want us to do part of production in your country, that's fine too. That is why I'm saying CMO for manufacturing. Next. That's what I want to share with you guys. And if any questions, I'll be happy to discuss with you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So now here is our Q&A session. So if you have any questions, please feel free to bring up. Yep, uh, at the back. I have a question for uh, Dr. Wu of Taiwan Bio Industry Organization. Uh, can you tell us in what field that Taiwan can have more cooperation with other countries in biomedical industry? Thank you. In the, in the past, <coughs> Taiwan has focused on the development of bio, uh, biopharmaceuticals and, re, and pharmaceutical as well as med, medical device. But currently, because of the uh, very strong the success success uh, story successful story in the in the I, ICT industry, so actually the government is uh, promoting the combination of uh, IoT with bio. That's one of the new field that you you can, if you are interested, you can find uh, many innovation uh, company here. So that's uh, in terms of the caring health. So right now we are not talking precision medicine. We are calling precision health. So anything you are, you like to deal with the, your health right before your body get uh, any affected uh, by any uh, either chronic disease or the infectious disease. So I think uh, for the traditional bio, biological or, or pharmaceutical or, or medical device, you can find a lot of opportunity. The new field or new frontiers is, is the one that I just mentioned. The combination of uh, IOT, ICT, IC industry with the biomedicines. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, over. Thank you very much, uh, Maxime from uh, Belgian. Uh, office. I have uh, two questions for uh, Dr. Jan. Thank you very much for um, for the very uh, useful presentation and congratulations on the work uh, you've done. Um, the first question is uh, regarding the COVID-19 vaccine 
Is it intended to be uh, only for the Taiwanese market or are you also planning to have the Taiwanese vaccine uh, exported in a way? Uh, and the second question is uh, related to the, um, in a way, the international status of Taiwan. We know Taiwan is not a full member of the WHO. And I was wondering if that had an impact on um, the recognition or certification of those vaccines that you are producing. Thank Good you. question. First of all, uh, we, produ we will produce at least, like I say, if we produce, we'll produce at least 50 million there. I believe Taiwan government will like to have a dual source of the supply. So they must get something from outside and something from inside. That's reasonable expectation. So think about it. We have uh, 23 million people here, two dose each one. That's almost 50 million. So if we don't get it from outside, we take care of our own people. If we get half of them from outside, but half of them can go out. That answer your question. Yes. All right. <laughs> and if there's more need internationally, we can produce more because we can get more strategic partner if we want. But right now we only get two because we thought that's what what we that's for the basic need. But once it comes to the point, there's international market for us and the international uh, need. That's we we can easily expand our strategic partners. So that's okay. That answer your first questions. Secondly, we're not a WHO member. How can we get approval? Now let me tell you. Ima, I told you there, Ima, European Medical Agency is outside of independent of WHO. So I you see we get approval from Ima from the our facility. Is Ima come here to inspect, give us the certificate, not WHO. That's number two. Number three, if you get a WHO certificate, doesn't mean you get a ticket into the EMA or USA. That's two different categories and two different standards. I don't want to say that too much, but we know the post uh, WHO certificate and the EMA certificate or US FDA certificate, we Exam the uh, we exam the uh, standard uh, and the requirement. WHO is easier. You, it's much easier to get a WHO approval than the EMA or FDA. But we don't get a WHO requirement because yes, politically we can, but doesn't stop us to go commercially. We've been through that 10 years ago. <laughs> you know, 10 years ago when uh, the, the H1N1 was in the, uh, on the, in the pandemic and the world is short of the vaccine and we produce it for ourselves and we have an extra. And uh, at that time we said, uh, WHO say, do you want it? We have an extra. Uh, then they get into the political uh, struggle. They say, well, 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 okay. So we didn't give it to them. But doesn't matter. WHO certificate and the EMA and FDS is two different category. Okay. Okay. So any other questions here? I have a question for uh, Dr. Chen. Um, how is the uh, rapid texting from Edmund 
uh, different from what we see on the uh, in the U.S. side or other countries? Well, I don't know what the other countries' uh, situation, but the most of the that I, I think I want to clear it up the. Some people keep saying uh, quick testing, quick testing, but actually the, the quick testing we are referring to is antigen testing, not antibody or not a so-called PCR testing. The PCR testing takes, is antigen, but it takes two, three days to get the result. So most of people say, well, we do that quick. But if you are doing PCR, you have to wait two, three days. And that's not good for the people who want to travel. And that gives you a two problem. The PCR testing gives you an open window because the PCR test, do you have in your or not? That means you've been infected. So you produce the, then you have antibody in, 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 in your body. Then PCR say, yes, you have antibody. That means you're infected. However, it takes seven days to 10 days to develop antibody on the human. So it only tests you te seven days ago. It doesn't tell you on the last seven days. So that's why some people test the PCR, say it's negative. But a couple of days later here say, well, it, it turned out positive. Because you only test them seven days ago. But the rapid test that we are talking about, the antigen test is testing you right now. You have it virus, you have antigen in your body or not. So antigen, once you get infected, that means you have antigen. But antibody takes seven days. That's why it's confusing. Um, okay, one, one more over there. Uh, thank you, Chairman. This is Fandy from the British office. Um, thank you for your speech, and I really enjoyed it. I just have one question following um, Sir over there with the antigen rapid testing. Uh, would you be ready by December, and uh, will you be having the uh, CE certificate for uh, ready for export? Thank you. Well, we hope we can get approval from Taiwan FDA by December. And that's the first step. But I believe with this, at the same time, we are also applying the US. Is it Andrew? Yeah, you answer that. You apply that, isn't it? We are going to uh, uh, apply uh, FDA and CE marking uh, in the uh, next, uh, in the January. Taiwan FDA or where? Uh, uh, Europe. Europe. Yeah. I try to get a Europe approval by January. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So now, actually, we have been collecting um, some questions from our online viewers, and we are now collecting like four questions to Dr. Jan as well. And I would um, talk about all the four questions all together, and I will invite you to answer all of them. So first the question is, may we know this vaccine halal for a Muslim? And the second question is, would Adamoon open to par partnering with another company to internationalize these vaccines? And the third one is, what is the annual production capacity, particularly for COVID-19 vaccine? And the fourth one is, um, is your company looking to partner with local company in another geographical region to fill and finish of the vaccine? Thank you. These are the four questions for you. Thank you. Uh, first question again. Um, may we know this vaccine uh, for a Muslim? Halad, the halad. certificate of halad for halad. Muslims. Oh, 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 oh <laughs> good question. Great question. Halad. You know, 
uh, a lot of uh, there's a large population of the Muslim, and they you, they have to be certificate by halal. And we are in the process getting the certificate from Hara. Uh, I know some of the vaccine uh, on the world on COVID-19 or flu vaccine is not halal certified. And uh, once that uh, became awareness, I think uh, that would make a difference. Uh, because some of them use the cell line cultures, they use uh, some animals uh, organ. The animal's organ is not accepted by Muslim. And the ours is, we don't. So we are okay on that. Second question is? Um, would you open to partnership with another company to internationalize these vaccines? Yes. Like I say, regardless you want to be distributors or you want to collaborate as a production, yes. We actually, we, we encourage that because, uh, we know the, since the COVID-19, the global supply chain is going to be different. It's not going to be a global supply for in one place. It has to become local, localized or regionalized. So that's why we welcome to cooperate with other company worldwide to make it the supply chain locally. Okay. And the third question? Yes, sir. Okay. So what is the annual produ production capacity, particularly for COVID-19 vaccine? Uh, I said, right now we have a 50 million uh, capacity, but if we need more, we should be able to. And the last question, maybe you touched on a little bit, a little bit before, but is, um, do you look forward to uh, partner with local company in another geographical region to fill and finish of the vaccine? With local company? Right now, we don't have that in mind. Okay. Yeah, we rather work with a, a company from abroad. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank yeah. you. Oh, sorry. One more question from me. Dr. Chen. Yeah. Um, you mentioned earlier that uh, you're now on phase two of the clinical trials, uh, and that is being done here in Taiwan. Yes. Uh, will you be engaging other countries? Yes, for we the have. Three? We are on the, actually, we're under the discussion with the phase two and three on the overseas. It's already in discussion, and we have uh, almost ready for that. Uh, but uh, we are not ready to publicly announce it yet because the our counterpart uh, uh, asked us to 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 be patient, wait a little bit, uh, because of many other reasons. But yes, we have. Uh, and um, we believe that will be a, Thank you. sometimes uh, in January. Okay. Since your vaccine is protein-based and not mRNA, uh, the uh, temperature requirement to no. hold yes. will be less. No, I mean we are normal. Normal. All the all the recombinant protein vaccine it doesn't require the outer coat temperature. Okay. Only messenger RNA requires that. Uh, we are just just like any other vaccine. No, 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 no need for that. Uh, but Pfizer and the uh, Moderna do, and the and the Pfizer actually needs even colder. It needs it's much colder than the uh, Moderna. So after inject the vaccine, how many days would it take uh, to create the antibody? After injection? Yes. Oh, t about three weeks. Two to three weeks. In any vaccine, in order to, pr to produce the antibody, two, two to three weeks. Two to three weeks. That's why you say when they were testing PCI, you only test antibody. That only tells you when you produce. You, your body uh, produce the response 
and produce the antibody. It doesn't mean that's the time you get infected. So usually three weeks, two to three weeks. And that's why when if you need a second shot, you do that after three weeks. Okay, so if there are no further questions, uh, we will now move on to the networking time, which is also the end of our today's seminar. Thank you very much for your participation today. And also for the online viewers, please help us to scan the QR code on your screen and we will be collecting your questionnaire. Once we collect and we will be sending out the PowerPoint files of today and we will also help you to uh, have the one-on-one -on -one meeting with um, Adamun Corporation afterwards. Thank you very much.